following is a presentation of TFNN. Let's go to David from Clearwater. Hey, Steve, thank you for taking my call on this one and to uh, pass a compliment to you. I've taken a lot of classes from uh, Tom since I became a Tiger back in 2009, and they're always phenomenal classes. And uh, yes. last Friday was my first class with you. And just want to say, Steve, fantastic. You were well prepared. The material was excellent. It was timely. It uh, was a really, really, really good class. And you kind of opened my eyes a few things that have enabled me to use your terminology. Take massive action. Hey, there you go. I love it. Live at TFNN, The Trader's Edge, with your host, Steve Rhodes. And uh, he's picked out a landing spot that is a good 25 feet above the hole. There's a good chance he doesn't get this inside the Marco's ball. guy's pretty good now the author of mastering probability steve rhodes good morning all you wonderful money masters and treasure hunters Welcome to the April 4th, terrific Thursday edition of today's opening bell on the Trader's Edge. I'm your host, Steve Rhodes, and thanks so much for joining me, folks. I absolutely treasure your presence here today, and my outcome, as always, is to help you to become a better money master and to provide you with the tools that each of us need in order to lead an inspired life. Because leading an inspired life, folks, that is what it's all about so let's go take a look at one of our tools. This is a tool I call developing your own model. You know, success, it's a very personal thing to each of us. For some, it means money. For others, it means love. And for some, it just simply means happiness. Success, though, is something that each of us must define for ourselves. Otherwise, how will we know if we've ever achieved it? Now, the secret ingredient, not everything's got a secret sauce. Well, success has a secret sauce, and that secret ingredient for defining success, it's nothing more than having an open mind to alternatives, which really is the same thing as learning to appreciate the other side of the debate. Now, in trading and investing, it's what we refer to as understanding the bull and the bear position. It's as simple as that. It's listening to a variety of opinions before you yourself make up your mind. Or maybe it's reading a variety of books before you make up your mind. Because no one speaker, no one talk show host, no one book, no one individual has all the answers for you. What you want to do is take advantage of all that is available to you. And here at TFNN, it's available all day long from uh, 9 o'clock in the morning till 6 p.m. Take advantage. Be eager to learn. Be eager to learn. And no matter where you are in your journey, take advantage of all of the information. Take a person's knowledge, but don't take it as the only knowledge. Make sure that your decisions are a product of your own conclusions, your own philosophy, folks. That will become the most valuable, or that is the most valuable ingredient of your success formula. This is is your guiding light. Develop your own model, folks, and success is simply yours for the taking. Let's go take a look at these markets here. Right now, a, a little bit of a flat to a down open uh, Dow futures. And that's what we'll actually pay attention to uh, first. If you're watching us on Tiger TV, what you see right now on your uh, page, you see I've got four quadrants. We're going to take a look at the daily charts here for the futures contract first before we take a look at the uh, intraday, the 30-minute chart out there. If you're listening in on the radio or your mobile device at tfnn.mobi, thanks so much for doing that. Remember, the live stream of this can also come through on that smart uh, smartphone pad that you might have out there. Just go to the home page of TFNN.com. Over on the right-hand side, you'll see the little button there with the three smartphones. Click on that. This show streams live to those devices as well. You can always get the archive of this show on Channel 9. Now, a lot to talk about this morning. We're talking, you know, the, uh, the uh, yen is uh, off to the moon, Alice. 
up uh, 288 pips out there. That's a huge move. Seen some wild swings in the uh, euro as well. Well, King Dollar, King Dollar is also off to the moon. That's up about 65 uh, cents right now. Uh, gold is trading down three bucks. Uh, not a big deal there, except it is very close to testing that 1535 area. And actually, it looks like today could be forming one of my hammer candles out there. A lot of time left in the trading session. You've got silver off four six uh, six pennies right now. Light sweet crude is uh, off a buck thirty over across the uh, pond here last night. I thought it was a big move the uh, day before. You had the uh, Nikkei up another two hundred and seventy two points. That was two uh, percent. Uh, you have the Hang Seng that finished down thirty points. Not really a, a big day on the Hang Seng. Uh, you know that's less than. Uh, Maybe one, maybe just under about uh, under two percent, as far as a uh, mo- under two tenths of a percent, I should say, as far as a move out there. Really, the Shanghai unchanged down two fifty over in uh, Europe right now. You've got the DAX off twelve, no big deal there. The FTSE off forty nine. Our call number is eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. I did say we're going to start taking a look at the Dow futures because the Dow futures really is the only futures contract here that has not broken through an area. Of support and the support that we're taking a look at was created here back on the uh, March twentieth day. March twentieth, you had a high of fourteen four seventy six. Right now, it's trading at fourteen four ninety. Now, the reason why I'm using that as a, a support area is, was because the really the last time that you saw the uh, bull or the bears show up here uh, happened to be on the following trading session, March twenty first. Bearish engulfing candle is where that uh, body entirely wraps around the uh, prior uh, body, and that's in fact what you have here. That sets up your resistance area, uh, which now has become support because the Dow futures have traded above that level, really becomes the high of that trading session that it engulfed, or you know, it's an engulfing maybe a bear sash candle, really almost one and the same out there. And so what you're looking at is really the high of that trading session, which is 14,476. We can see here that the uh, Dow futures got above that on March 28th, uh, tested that level. You know, you get above a, a resistance level, you want to test it, see if it, not you, but the market should want to test it. You want to be watching for those tests out there. And what the uh, Dow futures did was test it on April 1st, actually came back. Uh, well, I don't think it tested it yesterday as well. So test it yesterday gets down to a low of 14,454 close at 14,493 this morning as well has tested that level. It's been down as low so far at 14,468. You can see that level, which was old resistance, now is new support, continues to be tested. This is the cranky one out there. This is the Dow. So you get the Dow 30, in essence, trying to uh, hold the uh, market up here, and it's the last one. So you want to be paying attention to this because it has not given up yet. And by giving up, even if you take a look at that uh, Johnny Cash, Basil Chapman walking that nine-period EMA out there, that's the blue little squiggly line going across my screen. You can see actually that number here is 14,483 or 14,493. So you got the Dow futures still walking that line. But that's the only one that hasn't really broken a, a support level. Now, the support levels that we're taking a look at here right now, kind of really ultra short term, but still support levels nonetheless. You want to be paying attention to the uh, Dow. Now, if we go back and let's take a look at the Russell 2000, whole different story out here. Russell 2000, that top looks to be in. Take a look at the uh, same bearish engulfing candle from March 19th. Uh, that high out there was 948.40. You can see that the, uh, even though you had the uh, ES Mini getting above these levels, the Dow being the Dow futures being able to get above these levels, <clears throat> excuse me, the Russell 2000 one was, was unable to. So you can see how that truly did set up an area of resistance uh, right now. The first level of support uh, was broken. That first level of support is really this black line going across the screen. And, again, for those of you just listening in, we're taking a look at that black line. The top of that line is the high from February 20th out there, 933.20. That was the first level of support. That first level of support, because it was resistance previously, then was support. That was tested, and we saw a slight break of that uh, two trading sessions ago on April 2nd. Then yesterday was clear conviction, a break of that. Looks to me like the Russell 2000. And it wants to make its way down to that morning star candle configuration. That's from February. The uh, really the lowest of that candle configuration is February twenty sixth. 
that price point not at eight ninety two sixty. That is the second level of support out there. Today's candle, yeah, and it's got room. Uh, you know, it's certainly not oversold on the daily chart in any stretch uh, at all. So it looks like it wants to run down there. Nothing really significant. No follow through really today. Right now, just a bit of a, a pause here. But so much going on inside the uh, currency marketplace. Uh, I don't think that that's going to uh, last for most of the day. If we take a look at the Nasdaq futures. You can see the same thing out here. That being that resistance, uh, really being the high of March 8th out there, that level 2817. You can see yesterday that level was tested. So was it on the uh, day before on that nice update that we had inside the uh, markets, but wasn't able to break through there. You still got that 0.786 Gartley pattern uh, that is in play. Uh, what the uh, what the Nasdaq has been stubborn though. It's been a little stubborn mule. Really been traveling, you know, also sideways here since March. Uh, the first level of support really where you're going to get any kind of real release of information, bullish or bearish. Remember, you want to understand both sides of the uh, trade out there. You should understand both sides of the trade because that's how you would identify stops that you might be, uh, not stops that you, well, it's one way to identify stops that you would be using on any uh, trade that you would uh, enter out there, trade as well as exit points. Now, January 2nd, that is really the uh, uh, area that's going to show up as a first level of support, and that low is going to be 2686.25. Uh, that area was tested once before. Uh, that has held and uh looks like the uh, Nasdaq futures want to uh, move down there. They can't bust it up. You can't bust it up. What's going to happen? It's going to go ahead and try to bust it down. Of course, if we go now and take a look at the ES Mini, the ES Mini, the key price point to be paying attention to today because yesterday, well, we did have a break on the ES Mini, not on the S&P Cash, and we'll go take a look at the S&P Cash. But what the ES Mini did do yesterday was broke that 1556.25. Now, 1556.25, that is the swing point low from October 11, 2007 on the uh, futures contract. Uh, so you got a break of that. What we can see here that occurred during the uh, overnight session here is you got up, not you, but the ES Mini got up to a high of 1556.50. So it's been up over that. So we've already tested that. And that's what you want to see when you're taking a look at support and resistance levels. You want to see tests, and you want to see tests and see does price reject that area. And so far right now, after breaking down yesterday, uh, the ES Mini has gotten up there, and it has rejected that. A lot of time left in the trading session. Of course, what you can see here, the first level of support, which it has not gotten to, unlike, uh, well, it has not gotten to, then we'll go over and take a look at the S&P cash itself, but that's that bearish engulfing candle from February 20th. That high is 1530. That is the uh, level of support. So you want to, if it, uh, you, if the ES mini trades lower today, that's where you're going to want to be paying attention to that price point, 1530. If we go over and take a look at the actual index here, while we've got about 20 seconds to do that, well, that was Russell 2000. We'll come back. We'll take a look at that in a, a bit. But if we take a look at the S&P cash here, even though you had a, a nice move down yesterday, even though you had some bearish candlesticks, what it didn't do though, what it did not do, is get down to 1546.72. It still is inside that swing point from October 11th, 2007. 877-927-6648. Give us a call, folks. We'll be right back. What type of investor are you? Conservative, moderate, or aggressive? No matter your investor personality, your overall portfolio should reflect your financial goals, time horizon, and your risk tolerance. Help ensure your portfolio is appropriately invested with an asset allocation plan from Morgan Stanley Wealth Management. Simply picking the right stocks is not enough. Research has shown that choosing the right proportions of stocks, bonds, and cash is essential to the success of your long-term investments. Morgan Stanley believes a carefully selected portfolio can lower volatility and increase investment return potential. Find out about what an asset allocation and a Morgan Stanley Wealth Management financial advisor can do for you. Call Angela O'Brien, first vice president and financial planner of the Clearwater, Florida branch at 727-441-6108 today to discuss your personal financial needs. Asset allocation does not assure a profit or protect against loss in declining financial markets. Investments and services are offered through Morgan Stanley Wealth Management, LLC. Member SIPC. 
with the launch of Tiger TV. TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Ken Shreve, David White, Larry Pesavento, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. McEwen Mining is a high-growth, mid-tier producer in the Americas with a market capitalization of $1 billion. Experienced mining executive Rob McEwen, as chairman, CEO, and president, owns 25% of the outstanding shares of McEwen Mining and has put in place an ambitious business plan with the goal of qualifying for inclusion in the S&P 500 by 2015. With $70 million in cash and liquid assets as of the end of 2012 and completely debt-free, McEwen Mining is poised for growth. Production in 2013 is forecasted to grow at 24%, reaching 130,000 gold equivalent ounces. And over the next three years, McEwen Mining projects that their production will increase to 290,000 gold equivalent ounces, almost a three-fold increase from last year's totals. If you'd like to find out more about McEwen Mining, click on their banner on the front page of TFNN.com or check them out on the NYSE or TSX under the symbol MUX. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's new trading newsletter, Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. And you'll get the Technical Corner segment, which is a short but powerful weekly training session on trading. You'll You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you just the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two weeks. Go to TFNN.com and click on the free trial link at the top of the page. That's an $85 value, yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind and get the edge you've been looking for. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. So uh, before we went to break, we were just quickly taking a look at the S&P Cash Index. And yesterday, closing out at 1553.69 and still unable to break that 1546.72 level. It's been traveling with inside 1546.72. That's the low of October 11th swing point since March the 8th out there. So we're nearly a, a month into it, uh, really traveling uh, sideways here. I'd love to see a break one way or the other. What I mean by one way or the other, either a, a test of 1576.09, whether it breaks above it or not, uh, you know, do do at least get a, at least go ahead and perform a final test out there or a break, a clear break below 1546.72, a clear break below 1546.72. Uh, that sets up a, uh, a certain correction. Now, that correction, nothing more than a retracement, nothing more than a test most likely of the uh, most recent swing point low, and that would take you all the way down into the area of February 26, somewhere in that 1485 to 1498 level. But it can't do that until it breaks the 1546.72. So we'll see what uh, today brings. Uh, the uh, Russell 2000 was up on my screen when we first uh, 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 when I first switched over to those charts. So let me just go ahead and uh, pull that up here because that is uh, certainly the weak link out here. So it's important, just like we were taking a look at the uh, Dow futures because that has been a strong link. It's also just as important to take a look at the weak links and see what the weak links were doing and what the uh, weak link did out here. 
uh, it, which is the Russell 2000, was came right down into that first level of support. Now, that first level of support can be split either between the low of the uh, gap up from March 5th, that low was 9.2008, or the high of the actual gap up candle, the March 4th candle, which is 9, uh, 9.1669. What Russell did yesterday got down to 9.1684. Got down to 9.1684 versus 9.1669. So it hasn't actually touched that area. You know, is it just recharging here this morning to try to blow through that level? But you can see that support area, that line that is drawn across the uh, chart, and that's off of the March 4th high out there, which looks a little different than if you go take a look at the IWM. So, you know, you want to be paying attention always to the underlying instrument out here, in this case here, the Russell 2000 versus just making your trades off of the uh, IWM. Likewise, if you were trading bonds, you know, everybody will go rush over to the TLT. In fact, let's just go do that. Not that we're going to rush over there, but let's go take a look at the TLT. It's always better just to really uh, we're take a look at bonds and the TLT. So we take a look at the uh, bond here. What the bonds actually, what bonds actually did yesterday was they finally broke through that resistance level. That's the resistance from January 2nd, that high, 144.29. Broke above that area, trading above it here right now. I'd love to see another test of that just to confirm that it's not a false break topside. But what uh, bonds have been doing since January has been traveling sideways into consolidation range. That's the yellow box you see on the screen here. Now a break above that says 149 is absolutely on the uh, radar here. That is just simply a simple, easy way. It's an easy tool. Most people can see horizontal consolidation areas. So even if you didn't have any other technical background or experience you want to look for those sideways ranges and then you can know that a break above or below that will go ahead and typically make that same move it's really a version of a neckline that you're looking at out there it's just easier to take a look at from my standpoint just call it horizontal resistance now i mentioned the tlt out here now we know that the bonds actually broke through that resistance area but if you were trading just based on the tlt and we come back and take a look at it here is the line from january the second out here actually let me put the line in the right spot i didn't even do that uh this morning when i took a look at it so take a look at january 2nd and that high out there is 119.90 you closed just say 118.97 you didn't even get up to 119.90 yet this in essence would be the underlying instrument out there so you want to make sure that whatever it is that you're trading uh you want to have access to the underlying instrument so that you can make the best decisions possible pay for that information make sure that you've got access to it if you're going to go ahead and trade something out there in fact uh here let's go take a look at the etf as i mentioned the iwm earlier so if we take a look at the iwm the IWM here coming back and taking a look at the uh, trading session from March 4th. Notice how it actually got into that level. Now, did it with volume, did it with substantial volume coming into that area. March 4th had volume of 27 uh, million shares, even when it gapped up on that following trading session, 35 million shares yesterday coming down with 65 million shares. That's some giddy up and go on the uh, way down. But what you can also see that it did here is it, it got into that March 4th swing point. Uh, well, March 4th, it's not really a swing point. You know, it's kind of it's a it's a version of a swing point because you have to respect gaps that are out there. But that level, a high was ninety one seventeen, close at ninety one thirteen. Yet on the Russell two thousand index, it didn't actually touch that level. So, what a beautiful thing! And I love this music. This produced by my good friend Earl Clue out there. Nothing like Golf Thursdays, PGA Tour, kicking their session off. Eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. We're going to see how these markets are going to open. We'll be right back, folks. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization 
optimization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, gives you Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. With Market Insights, nothing is left to guessing. With the market at record levels, volatility is here, and now is a perfect time to take advantage of a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights. As recently as March 26th, Tom advised his subscribers to liquidate their four short short-term equity holdings, closing out all four positions for a combined 15.9% profit. And on April 1st, Tom advised his clients to sell their longer-term position in AIG warrants, locking in more than a 40% profit in just that one trade. If you'd like to see the kind of newsletter Tom O'Brien sends out to his subscribers each morning, then sign up for your two-week free trial to Market Insights today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. No matter where you listen to TFNN programming, we want you to know that you can always access your favorite shows on demand through TFNN.com. TFNN airs live programming every market day from 9 till 6 p.m. Eastern, and you can view each program by accessing Tiger TV through our homepage. We even have an easy link for all mobile devices, including iPhones and iPads, located at the top right of the TFNN homepage. But if you don't have a mobile connection that keeps up with streaming live video, then you can simply visit TFNN.MOBI in the browser of your smartphone for live streaming audio of all of our programs. The mission of TFNN is to educate our audience directly and interactively through our interactive website and call-in radio talk shows. TFNN is able to teach all levels of investors the technical skills needed for trading in today's marketplace. In order to get the best information available, TFNN has assembled the most respected financial minds in the country to provide the most current news and comprehensive advice available. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And we're off to the races. We got the Dow up 22 points, composite down one. S&P's up to uh, small caps. Russell 2000 up 23 cents. Google off four bucks. Apple unchanged. Microsoft down 19 cents right now. Intel up nine. Penny Cisco down two. Leading the charge, the upside it is Japan. They got the flag. You've got Toyota Motors up four dollars and eighty four cents. That's been a little rocket ship that is gapping up this morning over an area of some resistance out there, up about five percent. We'll take a look at that stock chart. TM is the ticker symbol. Right behind that, you've got the YCS. That is the uh, ultra uh, pro share for the uh, uh, yen U.S. dollar currency pair. That's up 5.6%. We'll take a look at the actual currency pair out there. 
Uh, you then uh, behind that, uh, let's see here. We've got a lot communications A L L T up ninety four cents. That's up about eight percent this morning. We'll peek in on that. Google's off seven bucks. Leader to the downside in the uh, clubhouse here. Uh, right behind them, Netflix uh, shaving off five bucks. Uh, Terra Data Corp T D C off two bucks. Uh, Valiant Pharmacy Pharmaceuticals off a buck forty six. North Norfolk Southern N S C off a dollar five. Let's go uh, peek in here on the uh, U.S. dollar Japanese yen currency pair. As you know, I was looking for the uh, yen to move down into the .786 uh, level. Uh, that was right around ninety-two dollars and nine cents. It did not do that, and it uh, it's not going to be back there anytime soon out here. You know, as we take a look at the currency pair, it got below the .618 level. That price point was it was a, it was a Gartley buy pattern down there, but yet there were no real bullish candles as it came in at ninety-three oh seven. Uh, level. In fact, even if you take a look at yesterday's candles here, even at 2.30, you saw a little bit of a, a morning star, but these bodies of these candles are so tight out here that it's not the type of reversal signal that you'd like to see. You had a little bullish engulfing candle down here that came in at 9 o'clock last night, but that alone, when you start taking a look at put all these candles uh, together, not much in the way of a uh, reversal out here, of course. Uh, the Bank of Japan uh, basically saying that they want to compete with Uncle Ben out there, and so they are weakening their currency big time. That's good. Good news out here is maybe we'll start to get some of that uh, good old Japanese uh, fish uh, because it's been pretty expensive for uh, for all the uh, sushi owners, for the good sushi owners, I should say, to uh, be bringing in fish from uh, Japan. Nothing like good fish from Japan, uh, especially if it's not around the uh, nuclear area. Uh, so uh, and maybe sake getting a little bit cheaper as well. But you can see just simply off to the moon, Alice, in the case of the yen, going from a low at uh, 1 o'clock this morning at 92.86, right now trading at 95.500. Boy, for anybody who didn't have a stop in place, if they were short this currency pair, yikes, uh, that will, uh, that will uh, simply wipe out all of your trading capital. Just make sure you're always using stops no matter what it is that you're trading. Now, what has the yen done as it made that move, got into that over? Uh, got into that overbought uh, territory. Well, let's go take a look at it. It is a .786 retracement or close enough to it. And we'll, let's get, in fact, let's get rid of the lines here on Tiger TV. Let's get rid of that A to B equals CD down. And uh, let's, we'll do it on the 30 minute chart here. Since I've got that on my screen, we'll go up to the high that was put in at about uh, 10 o'clock in the evening. No, I take that back. That would be 8 o'clock in the evening uh, on March the 11th when it was trading out right around 96.70, uh, all the way down to the low that was uh, put in here at midnight on April the 2nd. And you can see here that the actual point seven eight six retracement, $85.81, uh, it actually got up to a high here. Coming into the last uh, half-hour session, got up to 95.73 out there versus 95.81. you got to love that. So it's made this point seven eight six retracement. Now just really Really working off the uh, overbought uh, uh, condition here. Looks like it's going to work that way off just simply by moving sideways. So one heck of a move in that uh, currency pair. The uh, euro, that's been moving up and down and all around as we take a look at the uh, euro here. On the uh, daily chart, you can see that still traveling below, you know, it's old support level, now resistance. That is the uh, price point of 1.2875. That is the low off of the December 7th area. We can also see the euro not at all in a oversold condition. So the euro wants to travel down into the swing point low from November 13th. That's going to be 1.2659. It's just a matter of time uh, before it moves down there. If we go down into a intraday chart here take a look at the 30 uh, minute chart and the 30 minute chart spiking down to the 1.618 expansion of the last set of swing points last set of swing points here on the 30 minute chart coming off of the low at 230 this morning that's at a price point of 1.2788 all the way up to the high that was put in here at 1030 at 1030 last night oh, 1030 no 1030 yesterday morning uh, 1030 yesterday morning uh, and that was at a price point of 1.2862. If you take those two swing points and you just take a look at an expansion of that, you can see the 1.618 levels, 1.2743, actually got down during the uh, 9 o'clock session. I don't know if it was something that the uh, Bank of uh, the ECB, maybe it was Mario Draghi, he was probably out there uh, speaking from his uh, pulpit and, 
and somebody just simply uh, did not like uh, what he was saying. So he had a little bit of a spike down there. Uh, the actual low it got down to was 127.45. you got to love that. I mean, you're talking, boy, you're talking... You're talking a beautiful expansion uh, right there. Now what we can see is the euro is uh, bouncing higher. Of course, as it was doing that, getting into oversold territory, in fact, you got a real nice uh, price relative strength indicator divergence out here. If we do get a nice little pop here in the uh, euro, again, that's all that it is. The euro well below its uh, resistance uh, levels out here. Of course, that would fuel a little bit of a uh, bounce inside uh, today's market out there. So that's on the euro. Let's go uh, peek in on the uh, metals out here. A lot to really take a look at. Uh, during the course of the next couple of hours out here, or really all day. But let's go peek in on uh, gold, see what we have here in gold. Now, gold, you want to take a look at the 1535 level. 1535 is important because that is the September 26th low, uh, September 26, 2011, I should say. And that low is 1535, 359,000 contracts. That is a strong area of support. That level was tested on four occasions. It was tested back here on the date of December 29th. Got down to a low of 1523, did it with 114,000 contracts, not enough to bust it down, rejected it, moved back up towards the top of the uh, range, the top of the range really being in that 1800 level. Uh, then it couldn't bust it up, so what did gold do? Tried to bust it down, came back into the, uh, tried to bust down that 1535 level, couldn't do it, gets down on May 16th to 1526.70, does it on 159,000 shares, not enough to bust it down. Try it again on May 23rd, 175,000, not enough contracts out there. Tries it again on May the 30th, 259,000 contracts. Well, that was some pretty decent volume. Uh, still, though, going against 359,000 contracts, not enough to bust it down. That is a strong support area. Take a look at this descending price channel out here. Kind of interesting how the intersection of the uh, bottom portion of that uh, uh, descending price channel is matching up here with the 1535 level. Now, what's important about this stock chart uh, is that, uh, or a commodity chart, I should say, remember we were looking at the uh, chart of uh, of the uh, 30-year Treasury out there, and we were taking a look at that consolidation range. Well, that consolidation range only went back from January. January of this year. This goes back into 2011. Look at that consolidation area. It's a $265 consolidation area. So what does that mean? That does mean this. If you see a break of 1535, not a break, not like a test of it, but a close below 1535 out there, you're looking at another 265 point or dollar move in gold. 265 minus 1535, uh, that takes you into the 1400 range out there. But it's got to bust that area. If it doesn't bust that area, what will happen out here? What has happened each time gold has gotten down into this level and has rejected it? It's moved all the way back up to the top of the range out here. So that's what you would expect this time. So you've got a nice little setup in gold. However, no bulls yet have shown up. It has the opportunity today. In fact, if uh, gold were to close somewhere around the, let's see, it's been up at 1559. I'm just going to have to gauge this. Maybe around 1550, I'll call it. or So either 1550 or if it were to actually close up at about uh, 1563, 64, something like that, you'd probably have a uh, hammer case candle out there uh, testing lows. Now, what I don't like is that it has not tested yet this morning the 1535 level. So that's really what it is that we want to see. Uh, you did get down, or not you, but uh, gold actually got down to 1539.40. Uh, this morning, so it hasn't tested that level, and maybe it doesn't happen today. Maybe it doesn't happen till tomorrow, uh, which is what well, today's Thursday, and tomorrow would be a likely day because we're coming into Jobs Friday, so that's sure to have a little bit of fireworks out there. Jobs Friday, typically a day when the market sells off, regardless of the uh, news out there. So uh, that's one of the things that we could expect here, and maybe that's when we actually get the test of fifteen thirty-five inside gold. Of course, with gold moving down, you've got all the ETFs that are also uh, needing to uh, sell out here. So I do believe, I do believe this, that we're seeing gold put in one heck of a nice bottom on a 265-point uh, trading range that it is inside of. Silver, a little bit different uh, story out here as we take a look at high ho silver. Now, you got the same uh, trading range out here. Well, not the same dollar trading range. you got about a $9 and change trading range. That comes all the way back here 
into the uh, same day, September the uh, 26th out there. Now, you can see uh, that also has big volume, nowhere near the volume. On September 26th, number of contracts was 104,000 contracts out there. You're nowhere near that. Yesterday, uh, 57,000 contracts. 2615 is the number. So far today, you've been at a low of 2659, which is you're pretty much trading there uh, right now. So look for silver to also go down and uh, test out the 2615 level. Let's go to uh, Rich in Orlando. Rich, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? Doing well. Doing well, Steve. A little rainy here in Orlando, but uh, we need the rain, so that's okay. Yes, yes, yes. And uh, not too much. Well, it is April, right? It's supposed to April that's showers? Right. Bring May okay. flowers. Isn't that okay. how it goes? There it is. Go. It is. You want to take no- a look at uh, Nokia? Yeah, Nokia or Nokia, Nokia, NOK. Yeah. I mean, basically, I've been. I think we talked here a week or so ago, and uh, basically, it's like it seemed like it's been kind of flat and kind of building a base, and we were looking for a sign of strength. Yes. And I was just wondering if the last two days would kind of qualify for that sign of strength that we've talked about, or. or well, let's, t- let's yeah, let's take a look at. It. Let's take a look at it. So we're looking at uh, at uh, so so. What's the proper pronunciation of the, uh, of the company? I'm not sure. I always thought it was Nokia, but I'm not. Okay. I mean. It probably, it probably is. It probably is. So uh, as we take, it's not really any sign of uh, of strength out here. You know what you had was, and I don't recall uh, if if we talked about it on March. No, you know, 25th. I'm thinking I may have talked to Basil on it. And Basil did you? Mentioned. Okay, I, I apologize. Okay. Yeah. Okay. No, no, no problem. So you've got the, you have a now hammer so candle formation. What you've got inside uh, inside, we'll call it N O K for the time being. Sure. Is, sure. Uh, You've got uh, on March 25th. You had a nice little, small little hammer out there. That hammer is so small that you know it's not, it's not one with really great conviction out here. So we haven't seen a lot of price movement. When I'm talking about some, uh, some real, ex- and and also at that hammer uh, candle down there, what we also did have was the, you know, the equity was towards the over uh, sold level. So you expect a little bit of a bounce. What I'd be looking for as far as a sign of strength would be volume similar to what you saw to the downside that took place on March 15th. That had 114 million shares to the downside. Uh, you know, two trading sessions ago when the market was up, this only had 31,000, uh, 31 million contracts, uh, inside it. So not, not a lot of, uh, volume. Uh, inside this uh, equity here yet. You want to see some real nice sign of strength, uh, in my opinion, before you would go ahead and step into this. Um, yep. You know, and I'm just going to put this on the week. Let me put this on the weekly uh, basis out here. You know, it's doing what it's supposed to do, which is work off that oversold condition, but it's really just traveling yep. in such a tight trading range that, and with it being a $3 stock, and you figure that as we come back and take a look at it, the re, I'm going to put this on a uh, it's on a weekly basis here. You figure that, with the exception, I'm not talking about uh, some people back here in 2012, but inside this equity, everybody since the time period really of about 1996 would be in a losing position. Mm-hmm. That, that's pretty. That's pretty. Uh, that's pretty amazing. Yeah. Uh, right. This stock, you know, this stock did sell for at one point in time at uh, fifty six dollars. So. So in order to come off of a bottom effect, let's go ahead and put up uh, Hewlett Packard. Let's go see if Hewlett Packard ever gave you any kind of sign of strength coming off of a bottom because that stock certainly had been uh, beaten up and then made a, a pretty nice uh, counter trend move off of the uh, bottom out here. And so inside Hewlett uh, Packard, as it was uh, trying to make its move, you know, its real sign of strength inside this equity came in on uh, February 22nd out there, big volume uh, day. Uh, you also had another one here. So here's where you be, here's kind of what you would be looking for. Let me just uh, enlarge this on the screen out here. Your first real sign of uh, strength that came in on Hewlett Packard off of the bottom was on December 5th out there with 55 million shares to the upside. That's really what you want to be looking for. In the case of Hewlett Packard, when it had uh, moved down and tested that area, it moved down and tested that with 28 million shares on December the 31st. So that's that was a nice test because it was coming into a little sign of strength there. And then the uh, market had uh, moved up with another 50 million shares on January 2nd. That's the kind of thing that I think you'd be looking for on Nokia or Nokia. <laughs> okay. Listen, Alrighty. thanks a lot, Steve. I appreciate it. You bet. 877-927-6648. Dow's up 51. S&P is up 6. We'll be right back.
You've always taken the long view when it comes to investing, but what if there's an opportunity right under your nose? What if you could be more responsive to market trends to seek to boost your portfolio performance right now while seeking to reduce your overall risk? At Direction Funds, we connect investors with alternative strategies that seek to maximize their returns. Smart investors deserve smart alternatives. Find yours at directionfunds.com. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risk charges, and expenses of Direction Funds carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Funds. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact the Direction Funds at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. Investing in index funds may be more volatile than investing in broadly diversified funds. Distributed by Rafferty Capital Markets, LLC. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Recently, Basil Chapman has had some outstanding trades in his newsletter, The Opening Call. Each morning by 9 a.m., Basil uploads his newsletter to the TFNN servers so that his subscribers can access his expert trading advice. Basil gives his take on the direction of key indices and updates any active trades that his subscribers are currently in. Just recently, Basil's subscribers closed out a short position in Chipotle Mexican Grill, CMG, for more than an $86 profit per share, over a 20% gain in just one position. If you'd like to try out Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, then visit the front page at TFNN.com and click Trading Newsletters. There you'll find Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, where you can request a free sample copy. Also, don't miss Basil's program, the Tiger Technician's Hour, Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern, on TFNN. Tom O'Brien's weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, has helped subscribers for over 10 years navigate the high-risk world of exploring and producing gold companies. And now's a great time to sign up for a free month-long trial to see the kind of insight that Tom delivers for his subscribers on a weekly basis. Every Monday, Tom O'Brien issues a quick update on the metal market, giving you his take on the HUI, XAU, GLD, dollar bonds, and much more. Tom follows Monday's update with a full gold report, which is delivered to subscribers Tuesday afternoon with detailed coverage of 24 separate gold or metal stocks, as well as another 10 to 15 stocks that he lets you know are on his potential watch list. Get your month-long free trial to the gold report today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Don't spend another year navigating the metal markets on your own. Act early in 2013 and make the most of your gold and metal market investments. Catch the Money Masters as they teach you the art of mastering money when it comes to trading and investing. Next on TFNN. Welcome back, folks. The Dow is up 56 points right now. Uh, composites up one, S and P's up six, uh, Russell two thousand up a couple points, and let's go take a look at the ES mini. Let's look at a, a Gartley sell pattern that may be uh, forming here. We're looking at the uh, thirty minute chart, and it uh, looks to be uh, forming an A to B equals CD. Now the one to one A to B equals CD here. If you're watching this on Tiger TV, first your A point coming in at the uh, low of the uh, of the uh, four p.m. session yesterday. 
That was at 1544. That's your A point. Your B point out here is the uh, swing point from uh, 530 this morning. That level was 155650. Makes a uh, about a 70% retracement here coming into uh, 9 o'clock, coming into the open of the uh, Trader's Ed show as it moves down into the price point of 1547 and a quarter. That's your C point. A to B equals CD. One to one would take you to 1559.74. But what you want to really be able to do is you want to be able to line up retracements as well coming off of uh, swing points. In this case here, I would just simply use the swing point high that came in at 1130 in the morning on April the 2nd. That high is 1568. So you want to measure your retracement from that high to the low that came in at 4 o'clock yesterday. And that point six one eight and 786 is what you want to also be benchmarking. Now, what I also like to do is I like to, since we have our B to C swing point established, I like to understand the expansions just to give the range. Now, remember, the number I give you here is really just the uh, range, which you're going to be paying attention to our candle signals out there. So the range here looks to be about the 1560 two and a quarter why at 1562 and a quarter because you've got a 0.786 retracement and you also have a 1.618 expansion uh, out there uh, that you can see of the b to c leg so that is the uh, that's the target that i would be uh, looking for for a, a bounce inside the es mini now would you sell the market right then and there absolutely not you got to wait for a uh, reversal signal. That'll come in the uh, form of a candlestick. Now, if we want to take a look at what the 1.272 expansion is, well, that's pretty easy. Just take your expansion ruler, go from the swing point high at 5.30 uh, this morning down to the 9.30. 1.272 takes you to 15.59, uh, and, uh, well, 15.59 even at 15.59.75. That's where you've got your one-to-one a to B equals CD. Now, that point six one eight retracement, though, coming off of the high down to the uh, low uh, that came in yesterday at 4 o'clock is also in that uh, same area. So it could be 1558 uh, uh, to 1563-ish, 1562-ish. That's where you should be looking for some type of reversal signal because that would set up your Gartley cell pattern uh, inside the uh, ES Mini. You could just correlate it. Now, what is it that you would sell if you were going to sell? Well, that's pretty easy. You go take a look at the uh, Russell 2000. You would take a look at the uh, weak link out there in the uh, marketplace. So let's go peek in on the uh, Russell. Let's just go. So let's go peek in on the uh, ETF on the IWM here while we have a, a minute. The IWM doing virtually nothing here. Take a look at this. You know, down yesterday with. And let's go to the 10 minute chart here. So let's do that here real quickly. Uh, of course, you've only had a couple of 10-minute uh, sessions in here. But let's look at the 10-minute uh, session of the IWM. You can see this is really not doing anything, not anything at all, not even really being able to take out the uh, 3 o'clock uh, time period here. You know, that would be a real junior swing point, 310 yesterday out at 91.61. So you could use the ES Mini, look for a sell signal there, and then what you would sell is you would go ahead and sell weakness. So, folks, if you're off to uh, start your day, um, I want you to have a, uh, a terrific Thursday out there. I want you to be safe, and uh, hopefully you're staying around and listening to the rest of the TFNN programming out here. But I will always want you to remember this, and that is that you have an amazing power within yourself. And that power is so strong that it will create a life of abundance, cure incurable diseases, build billion-dollar businesses, paint magnificent, beautiful wonderful masterpieces but most of all create fantastic loving families thanks so much for being a part of the tfnn family have a great thursday look forward to seeing you soon folks let me tell you something folks yes. i have people coming up to me saying i just can't believe the amount of work that steve does on his newsletter yeah. and i says i absolutely agree that is a recent clip from the money masters show that tom and i do each day at tfnn my newsletter service, Mastering Probability, is much, much more than a newsletter. Yes, it's outperformed the S&P 500 by 100% during the last 15 months. But more importantly, it's an extraordinary education, a roadmap for your success. And it's yours risk-free for the next 30 days. Just go to the homepage of TFNN.com and click on my name, Steve Rhodes, and then Mastering Probability, because everyone needs a success strategy. For most, it's a competitive edge, the will to win, the drive to overcome any obstacle. Whatever you call it, winners find a way. Find your way to mastering probability today.
because your journey to extraordinary rewards is just one click away.